The single most important thing in photography is nailing focus. Without it, you've got blurry images and there's no point in going back home to your computer, downloading your images and finding out they're blurry. It's a heartfelt experience that I wanna save you from. In this video, I'm gonna give you three tips to help you nail focus and at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip for how to nail focus with your smartphone and it starts right now. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Sean Seymour. I own a photography studio in Sacramento, California. I do a lot of photography tutorials and reviews. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three, maybe four, plus one tip on how to nail focus. Three, maybe four, for your camera, plus one for your phone. So stick around to the end of the video where I cover that. Without question, the most important skill that you can master in photography is focus. Have you ever been out shooting? You look at the back of your camera and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is the best work I've ever done. And you're looking at the back and you're thinking, I can't wait to get back and download these things so I can look at them on the computer. You get home, put the card in, start the download, and you start looking at them on a big screen and you're like, oh no, soft focus. These are all soft or completely out of focus. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, that's a bummer. In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips that if you will try them, you're going to nail focus more often than you used to. This is good for pros or people that have been shooting for a while. It's also great for beginners. And you can have fancy lighting gear, you can have fancy cameras, lenses, you can have light stands everywhere, multiple assistants standing on the side, you could be shooting for big names, or you could just be taking pictures of your kids. If you don't have things in focus, forget it. Now the next door neighbor wants to shoot his nail gun off on his stupid roof that he's been working on for over three weeks. Tip number one, use your focus points. By using your focus points, you are going to help your camera know exactly where that focus should be dialed. Rather than using the center focus point and doing a bunch of camera movement in order to compose, move your focus point to where you want the composition to be and then take your photograph. The other thing this does is I personally have noticed that when I'm using a focus point that's in the center and I have to recompose in a very you know drastic way, what I've noticed is that the lens gets softer on the edges. I don't know what the engineering is behind that, but I've noticed it in all the photos that I take when I use a center focus point and I try to recompose by pushing the model or whoever it is out to the outer edge. Let me show you how you can access focus points really, really quickly. I'm gonna change the way that my joystick acts when I'm shooting. Normally, if I wanna change a focus point, I have to press this autofocus select button first and then use the joystick. If I wanna change my autofocus focus point button, whatever the hell, I hate this button. Auto focus point selection button. It's the little one that looks like a crisscross in a box. Wouldn't it be much nicer to just move the joystick to one side up or down and not have to press any other buttons? That's exactly what I'm gonna show you now. First, you're gonna press the Q button on the back of your camera. After you press the Q button, go ahead and go to Custom Controls. From Custom Controls, I want you to scroll down and select the joystick. That's the dot in the middle with a bunch of arrows going every direction. Now, mine currently is set to the autofocus selection. You're probably gonna see off. Go ahead and select Direct Autofocus Point Selection, and then make sure you press OK. Once you press OK, it will come out to the custom control menu again, and you can go ahead and back out of this using the menu button. Now, when you go to change your autofocus points, you can just go ahead and use your joystick to move them wherever you want. Now the ceiling is dripping water from the air conditioner. Love that landlord. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have a dog and no, it's not taking a pee in that bucket over there. What's happening is water comes through the ceiling. I catch the water in a homemade DIY catch basin. It goes down a black tube and into a bucket. Thus is the studio. Mm. Seriously. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching an Austin Powers movie. <sighs> Evacuation complete. Nope, it's done. Okay, <laughs> let's get on with this. Evacuation complete. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Number two is using 
back button focus instead of using your shutter button to press halfway for focus. Before I start, let me tell you this much. I am making a video about back button focus and once you watch it, I think you're going to be amazed at some of the things that you can accomplish with back button focusing. What it does is it separates the shutter button from the focus. So right now what you have to do if you don't use back button focus is you have to depress this shutter button halfway, get focus, hold it there, and recompose then shoot by pressing it all the way. When I'm using back button focus, I've separated actuating the shutter from focusing. I can push this button back here to focus and I can shoot as many times up here and the two don't mix. Look at this, look at this, what is this? It's a flare up. We have a flare up. Do you think I should burn it off like they do in the oil industry, just burn? let it flare up. Why is that important? I'm going to make a whole video about this and trust me, when you watch that video, you may actually change your mind and think, oh, back button focus is going to be uh, a really good thing for me to try and adopt. But why it's important is because people who don't use back button focus and let's say you're shooting the eyes of a person, you're going to be focusing, composing. Focusing, composing. Focusing, composing. You can't really continue to shoot because the camera wants to refocus again. Keep that in mind for my next tip. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into depth on back button focusing. If you wanna take a look on the internet, you'll see that there's a lot of controversy about it. Some people love it, some people don't love it. Trust me that it does take a little bit of time for you to get used to that, but once you start using back button focusing, your mind will no longer think about focusing and you'll start thinking about the other things in the photograph. These buttons in the back of your camera will all be utilized to create different types of focusing for every situation that you can possibly be in. Okay, let's say that you want to try back button focusing before you see my video or before I put it out. Let me go ahead and briefly cover for you how to set up back button focus in your camera. The first thing you're gonna do again is hit the Q button or go to your menu and find the custom control now that you select custom controls, you can see that it's probably gonna stop on shutter button, half press, and meter stop, or meter start, my bad. So my shutter button is left to start the meter when I press it, and obviously when I press it all the way, it's going to take a picture. And then my autofocus on button, or AF on button in the back, is set to go ahead and start the autofocus. And this is where you do that, here in the custom control menu. I will cover a lot more of that in my video on back button focus, but for now, just know that back button focus, I love it, many professional photographers love it. No, it doesn't make us elitist. No, I am not going to judge you on having your own opinion. Opinion. So for those people that don't use it, that's fine with me, but I have found that back button focus has literally removed the thought process behind having to focus and instead has made me much, much faster and more efficient with my focusing than I ever was before using back button focus. I need some water. Ooh, mouth was dry. Feeling good now. Totally lost my train of thought with this stupid <laughs> bucket pee pee water thing. Okay, tip number three, pre-focus. What do I mean by pre-focus? Pre-focusing is used a lot in sports photography. It's also used a lot where you have action that you know ahead of time where the action is going to happen. I can take my camera and I'm not knocking anybody that's using the shutter button for focus, but Back button focus makes this very easy. I take my camera, focus on where I want the focus to be and where I think the action is gonna happen. Then I can follow the action using the shutter button, taking pictures, and I don't have to worry about focus because I already know where the focus is going to happen. One of the things you can do is go ahead and set up, before the action starts, go ahead and set up your focus. Give yourself a little bit of a leeway with your depth of field. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have a depth of field video. It goes in depth, <laughs> dork. But pre-focusing will help you get tack sharp images if you know where the action's gonna happen. Cheer, stunt, baseball, all of these things, tennis, 
You know where someone's going to serve the ball every time. You know where the pitcher is going to be every time they go to throw the ball. You know where the catcher is going to catch the ball. If you pick a line or you pick a spot and you pre-focus before the action happens, but now you can pull away and concentrate on actually catching the shot that you want versus worrying about the focus. All you have to do is start taking pictures when they cross that focus plane that you're on and you're good to go with the pre-focusing being tack sharp on stuff that might normally be blurry if the camera was trying to search for focus. One of the things that I want to mention is the expensive cameras have much, much better autofocus systems and so I can leave some of the decision making process up to the camera although I don't usually. If you're using a camera that isn't as expensive as the ones with the, the high-end autofocus systems, pre-focusing can give you the results of a more expensive camera if you know where the action's gonna happen before it happens and you focus and then get ready to shoot. All right, I'm gonna share with you one more tip that I didn't tell you about at the very beginning, and that tip is pretty simple. The back of your LCD screen, zoom in and see if you're in focus if you get a chance, especially if you're doing something like taking group shots or you're taking shots of someone that's uh, static or maybe they're leaning up against a post and you're taking shots. Double check your screen in the back and use the zoom in feature to really zoom all the way in and see if it's tack sharp or not. If it's not, figure out what's going on. Maybe you need to move your focus point, maybe you need to pre-focus, or maybe you are just missing the focus or your camera is missing the focus a lot of times you can change it right then and there while you're on the scene you're on you're doing the shoot versus getting back to your computer and finding out that you were out of focus for all 30 frames or all 150 frames whatever you shot look at the back of your screen not just at the picture but zoom in and look at whether or not you're in focus that's my extra tip all right let's move on to tip number four <laughs> my phone is always so dirty brand new screen i broke this screen yesterday this screen is brand new and it's already dirty man I'm, i must be a slob not good for the ladies all right i had a fuzz on me my screen is not working is what's happening here well this this screen may have to go back because it's not working it's not working at all actually <laughs> nothing is working let me get a different phone Okay, I'm back with a different phone. I'm gonna show you my fourth tip, which is how you can lock focus and actually lock the exposure on your phone before you take pictures. So the first thing you wanna do is on your phone, we'll put this up here so you can see it. When you wanna lock focus, all you have to do is press your phone on the space that you wanna lock focus and you wanna lock the exposure until there is a double yellow blinking box. There it is. Now that focus and exposure is totally locked. Now I can go ahead and take some pictures. That tip right there is a great tip if you wanna take fast action shots with your iPhone or with your smartphone, but obviously you can't follow fast action with your, with your smartphone sometimes. So use tip number three and pre-focus with your phone. Pre-focus by pressing and holding till the yellow box comes up, recompose, and go ahead and use the burst mode to get pictures of fast action. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful on how to nail focus. And if you did, please hit the like button down below. That tells YouTube that they should show it to other people and that helps my channel grow. If you wanna follow my content, hit the subscribe button and that bell notification will give you a notification when I have new videos coming out. I'm trying to release once a week, so stay tuned for more photography, more reviews, and until I see you on the next video, keep it simple. Woohoo! You know it. I beat you this time, notification. Ha <laughs> ha! You didn't get me on that one.